Hey stencil fans, it's Patty with Studio R12 Stencils and today I'm excited to bring you diamond plate. Um, you may not need to paint diamond plate, but I guarantee you, you're gonna wanna stick around because this isn't just about diamond plate and stencils that do that. This is a leafing, this is a, a silver leaf. We're using rust powders and we're using a, a texture paste to put a texture on this. So you're gonna learn how to do all of those things through a stencil. I think your hippie noodle is gonna be blown and I cannot wait to share it with you, so stick around. Hey guys, I hope that you are ready for all things diamond plate. We have so much, we have enjoyed diamond plate so much, we have put it on everything and I'm gonna be sharing some examples with you. Um, the one I wanna do today is this diamond plate background with a metallic finish on it. When you get just a jar of metallic paint, it doesn't give you a reflective coating. So what I wanna do today is show you how to use silver leaf to get the metallic. It is the one that will make it look exactly like metal because it is actually really thin sheets of a metallic. So let me show you how we're gonna get that done. Um, I wanted this one. This one is a sign. It, it wouldn't do this if you were putting it on like a stool for a, a little boy or if you were putting it on a chair, which we painted a, an example of. You would do this for a sign for your wall because it has a texture on it. So our step is we're gonna take some of our modeling paste, and we're gonna put that out on our palette. Okay, and I'm gonna be generous with that. You can use um, a lot of different things to push through stencils. So don't be afraid of using your stencil as um, like a mask for things that you want to have sit. I'm gonna show you how this works and you're gonna be amazed. Okay, um, I'm going to line this stencil up. This stencil is a little bit too big. Um, the wood surface is a little bit too big for my stencil. If I was doing this, um, where, when I did this, um, I had to let it all dry. So I had to position it this way, let it all dry, and then I had to move it over, and then I had to move it over. I had three drying stages because I chose a surface too big. So what I would recommend is making sure that your stencil fits or allow for extra time to be able to do that. It wasn't like a deal changer, I did it. But um, it would be much easier if my, my wood surface was smaller than this to do this project, to do this um, technique. So I'm going to show you how to, I'm gonna get some tape out. I'm gonna show you how to push the modeling paste through. So we're gonna just tape our stencil down in two spots. Um, this um, video will have some affiliate links so you can um, figure out where to buy the different supplies. Some of these supplies are a little bit harder to track down, so I think having links is a really good idea. Um, and I think there are Amazon affiliate, affiliate links. Okay, I'm gonna take a wide palette knife. This is a piece of equipment that you definitely wanna have in your tool box for painting because you can use it for all kinds of things. Scraper, gouger, spreader, all the things, mixer. So we're gonna pick up our, um, our paste and we're going to just apply it straight across. If I want it heavy, I'm gonna put it on there real heavy. If I want it smooth, I can smooth it out. So you can decide how heavy or smooth you want that. Just gonna apply it. And then I scrape it like you're kind of, you know, frosting a cupcake or a cookie or something like that. Just scrapey, scrapey. And you can do this with letters. Um, and then what I've done, or what I'm gonna show you, is that once you put something in the background, scrolls, chicken wire, whatever you like, once you put that in the background, you can paint right over the top of it and it makes it just look like it's embossed. So you could almost call this instead of like um, um, 
putting the medium through the stencil, you could almost call it like embossing with stencils because it definitely gives it that embossed look. And it just adds a really charming, unique look to your background. Okay, so I got half of it done. I'm gonna go ahead, just because it looks so cool when you lift it off, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of it. So you see, I'm not really being very particular about, you know, like a technique. I feel like I'm doing toothpaste out of the middle here. <clears throat> okay, and so go here, just keep going. You could take, um, I'm not going to put words on the top of my sign um, today, but you could definitely take words and put it on top of your project. Um, like we did on another video. We have a couple of videos um, that I'll show you after I get this on here um, that we have for diamond plates. So we've got one that's on a bar stool, which would be so great for a man cave, a dad cave, a grandpa cave and all that stuff. Um, it also would be great in the garage. We have, um, we've done a grandpa pillow. So how cool would that be to make grandpa a pillow that's got diamond plate on it? I think it would be wonderful. Um, my dad doesn't have a handy bone in his body, so I would not make it for my dad or my kid's grandpa, but um, I know like my husband is absolutely the king of all the DIY projects. So for him, it would be an awesome little present. And it's just something different, you know? I just love that it can be different. We um, started a stool project for a kid's like potty stool. So that would be super cool too if you had a kid that was really into race cars and stuff like that. You know, a little, little guy, you could make him something that would go with that. So I'm gonna wipe off my, my extra medium. I'm gonna grab a paper towel, wipe that off of there. This will harden like rock. So whatever you leave it on while it's um, wet will be there forever when it dries. What's nice about that is it will last forever, like it stays. Okay, I'm gonna remove my tape. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift straight up. Let me turn it a little bit so you can see towards the thing. And then what we're gonna lift straight on up. Ta-da! How amazing is that? Okay, in the real world, when I would be not standing in front of cameras doing this, I would take this immediately to my sink and I would go wash this off. But that cannot happen right now. So, but you definitely do not want to leave that paste on there because it will wreck your stencil. So I'm going to set this off to the side. And then I'm going to pull out another stencil that I have. Okay, and this is a really neat way to organize your, your stencils. I have lots of pattern stencils um, here. I've got buffalo check and snowflakes and gears. Gears would be really cool with this project. And I've got my um, lovely, um, used diamond plate. So I'm gonna pull that out so I can finish my project. These are the disc rings um, and they're super like, super, super, super sturdy to be able to store your um, stencils in. And we actually have done them in colors. This is our um, banding stencils. So you can just like layer them together. Here's just everyday words so you can color code. And when you take them out, they just whoop, straight on out like that. Isn't that fun? And then that will be one of the affiliate links. And then this is the punch that you use to punch the holes in your stencil to be able to put it in the little disc things. So this is gonna dry, but I have one that I've made <clears throat> that is already dry. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do that part that's gonna make it look like it's embossed. Okay, so I'm gonna get out one of our foam. Um, this is a poly foam brush. They're awesome little um, foam brushes as compared to not awesome ones. Um, they really, 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 really are a standard all of their own. Okay, so I'm gonna take my brush and I'm going to dip it into my gray and I'm going to just go over the top of everything. I actually didn't really need to base coat my project gray to begin with because I'm doing this step. Okay, and while this is drying, um, if you guys have any questions, um, you can pop, pop them down into the comments below and then we will um, get on there as we see them and answer for you. Always make sure, so Studio R12 is all about 
your stencil fun. We want to um, give you answers. We want to inspire you. Make sure that you go to um, Facebook and like us and follow us and all the things. And then um, you will be able to see some of our lives where we give away for free prizes and stuff. And if you are not already on our website, um, and if you haven't already joined our newsletter list, that's when you'll get the bonuses and deals and, and special things like that. So make sure you do that too. Okay, that's a coat. And you can see it just really makes it just look just, just fun. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna put my foam brush in the water. And I'm going to show you some examples while that is drying, okay? So the pillow that we were talking about. How cool is this diamond plate? And this is a plush velveteen look. This is a video um, on our channel, so you can take a look for that to see how to paint on fabric. If you want to paint on fabric, you almost have to have a stencil because you can't, your brushes won't do the brusherly thing without having a stencil. So you can pounce on fabric easily not so easily to um, paint regularly. And then on the other side, we did the grandpa's garage. And I think that's just a fabulous, fabulous um, Mother's Day gift. Okay, and we also did a um, Dustin's garage. So this is a personalized um, stencil. Actually, the grandpa's garage is also personalized. So you can go on our website and you can put any name you want. It doesn't have to say grandpa, you can put granddad or papa or any of those things. You can even put their name on them. Uh, but you can get that pre-cut out with all your stuff. In this video, I show you how to do the drop shadow. That really makes these letters pop. I show you the um, how to do the diamond plate without the texture and then the rust as well. And then these are some other examples that we did of different colors. So you could do them in colors and it still really looks manly, really masculine, and you could do your diamond plate in any kind of color you want. And my final one that I'll show you is kind of big, so here we go. All right, this one was just an ugly old bar stool and we took it, took the top off, painted it, it's nice and smooth, put the rest on it without the sand in it, and I think this is just really, really a sharp piece. All right, I think I'm still gonna have to blow dry. So pardon me for just a minute. So now what we're going to do next is we're going to do our background effect, what we have going on here. Sometimes it's difficult to look, this is what videos are for, right? Sometimes it's difficult to look at something like this and to be able to ooh, um, predict how the artist or maker made it. So sometimes I think that's when the, these videos are really powerful because you might not know which way or which order to do these steps in. So that's what we're here for is to help you figure that out. So we're gonna do that background first, um, and it's a mottled looking funny color in the background. And we're gonna go into our green, and let's see, we're gonna go into a big dome brush. Somebody read my mind, look at this. I forgot my glasses and they brought them to me. Thank you, Gary. Okay, so we're gonna get out some paper towels. And I usually have these folded in a big flat. I like to do them in um, the two sheets, the two skinny sheets, and then fold it in half. It gives like a little bit of, um, of a push when I'm wiping off the brush. If I'm just on a single, it doesn't seem to grab the paint off as much. So I, I get a better wipe, if that makes any darn sense. That sounds interesting, but um, it, it comes off better. I think it's better. Okay. Dome brush, dry dome brush. Pick up my paint, I'm gonna swirl off over here, and then in between this pattern that I've done on here, I'm gonna swirl on a color. Okay, and it kinda almost doesn't matter um, where, you, um, where you put it, you can 
decide if you like a lot or a little. Um, you just want something going on in the background to give it like the appearance of like beat up and weathered diamond plate. Okay, so look at that. And see how easy this is to do? This is super simple. Um, that paste is so nice to do. I did show, um, my son Chris paints a lot of samples here with us. Um, we have we have like five or six different people that paint samples. But um, he was doing the paste for the first time. And when he lifted, he pulled. So you do wanna make sure you lift straight up. It's really easy to do. When he did it the second time, he didn't have a problem. But um, it's easy to smear it if you don't know. If you did smear it, I'm gonna show you that in just a second. Super easy to go back and take it away and then put it back on. So um, that's a good point to show. Okay, there's that coat of that. While this might be fresh enough, it might be dry, too dry to do it if I'd have done it right away. But you can take your little thing like this and you can just peel that right off and then you could put it back on. Um, so if you caught it right when you revealed, you could peel it off, you could use a little sandpaper and then redo it and you're gonna be perfectly fine. Excellent tool for your toolbox is the wide um, palette knife. Okay, we're gonna pick up a little bit of a lighter gray. Always shake your paints. Never hit your hand when you shake your paints. I was um, suffering from like pain in my hand and I, why does my thumb hurt? Why does my thumb hurt? Because every time I shook my paints, I did this for like 20 years and it was giving me whatever that thing is. So never like do that. Use your arms. Um, ask me how I know. <laughs> okay, that's free advice. That's not medical advice. Okay. We're gonna neutralize the color in our brush by just putting the brush into the lighter color and then wiping all the paint out. This will save you on brushes. So if you don't um, you know, want to have a whole bunch of these brushes, you have to use these dry. If you don't wanna have a whole bunch of them, then you need to learn the tricks that will keep it so that you don't use them wet. So I can neutralize and that will prevent me from needing another brush. Okay, so now we're gonna go in here and just kind of within where I'm gonna thread around the squiggles that I already did. So I'm just kind of winding around, just not even taking my brush off the thing. Threading, threading. Do, do, do. It's just kind of fun to paint like this. Sometimes if, you're, if you don't know like where the paint belongs, and you're just a little uncertain, you know, that's a lot of people struggle with that, especially if you're a newer painter. Sometimes it's really helpful. Just squint at your project and let it tell you its story. That sounds really floofy and weird and stuff like that, but it actually works really well. It's like getting a second opinion. Like when your eyes are wide open and you look at something, you like see it too well and you're not getting like the background story. When you squint, you're just getting the color story and it's super helpful to know if you've done enough or you know too much or whatever. So I'm standing here just squinting at this thing right now. And like, where do I want my story to continue? Especially when you're doing random background things. Okay. So we are, are you having fun squinting? <laughs> if you put it in the chat, I'm a squinter, right? Okay, we've got that. I think that's enough. I'm looking at my example. Sometimes if I get much more blind though, I won't need to squint. I'll just be able to not use my glasses and do it. Okay, so we are gonna call that winner, winner, chicken dinner. And now we'll go on to the fun next step. I hope that you are ready for your hippie noodle to be completely blown because this is really cool. All right, so we're gonna lay our stencil over. And I believe the piece of advice that I have given on the other videos is to know where your, which direction your stencil is facing. This stencil in particular, and probably all pattern stencils. And by the way, on pattern stencils, we have hundreds of pattern stencils of every kind in nature. Um, like we have pattern, we have got you covered for pattern stencils, anything that you'll need. So 
So where this gets hard is if you don't know which direction you were facing. Oh, I think I nailed it. Just completely by accident. Um, it's really like a Chinese puzzle to fit that back on there. Um, thank goodness that just worked out because I saved you guys some tears, <laughs> you know? All right, so we're gonna tape our stencil again. And you would not need two stencils to do this. Um, I need two stencils because of um, not being able to go wash that one off. And when you wash your stencils, just put them in the bottom of your large bay sink. Um, you don't wanna put them in a little bathroom sink and, and crumple them. You know, you, the one thing you can't do with a stencil is fold it because you'll never recover it. Okay, so just FYI, that is the one thing you cannot do with a stencil and fix it that I've ever seen. And I've, you know, owned a stencil company for a long time. Okay, so um, we are gonna use this Speedball um, Mona Lisa Metal Leaf Adhesive. This is one of those things that's really tricky to find. Um, it is extremely tricky to find, actually. I had to hunt for it. Um, I, I tend to go to the big box um, um, craft stores and just kind of look for weird things that I wanna show you guys what to do, um, what, how to use. And they have this one in a town of like an hour and a half from here. And I picked it up while I was there so that I could show and tell. Okay. We are going to use a stencil brush because we're through a stencil. And this is gonna be sticky and ewy and gooey and you're gonna to wanna to clean this brush out right away or you're gonna ruin it. This stuff, this stuff is interesting. So what happens with this is it, it actually um, is a repositionable kind of an adhesive. So when it dries, like it's wet right now, when it dries, it's gonna be sticky and it'll stay sticky. So whatever I stick on top of it is going to stay. Okay, so you're making, you're making a sticker. All right, so what we'll do is we'll just put on, and this is tricky a little bit because you gotta go like now. It's gonna dry, and no, I'm, I'm actually wrong. You don't have to because it's gonna dry sticky. I was thinking I had to get it before I dried, but I don't have to do that. So we're just gonna get that on top of all of those raised things. If you guys happen to try doing the diamond plate, I wanna see pictures. I have five sons and I needed this in my life back in the day, you know? So um, I think that there's not enough guy stuff. Somebody po pointed that out on one of our YouTube videos. Uh, make sure that you're subscribing on our YouTube videos because we have a lot of content, um, but there's not enough guy stuff, you know, in the world. It's just, it's all about women, I think, with painting and crafting. And I think our guys get left out. I think any dad would love that pillow. Any grandpa, any dad, any guy, any uncle, brother. Got to remember the brothers, right? Okay. The one thing about this, you want to make sure you get everybody covered. If you do not, then you will um, not be able to really go back and get it without making a mess. This is another example of you're going to want to go clean your stencil right away because that will dry sticky on this thing. So, and you don't wanna wreck your stencils. Okay, I'm gonna call that, and if I forgot something, then, oh well. Okay, I'm gonna lift that off while it's wet, and then you're gonna go right away and go wash this stencil off. Okay, and I'm gonna set this one aside. Okay, now we gotta get that dry. So, I'm going to hit the dryer. zoning out right there. All right, here we go. This is weird and fun and wonderful and scary all at the same time. I think you're going to love it. Um, you're going to make a big mess. Don't do this on your, you know, your brand new cleaned carpet. 
Um, you're gonna wanna be someplace where you can kind of make a mess because this gets a lot of fluffy things that float around a little bit. <clears throat> this is a makeup puff. It's super soft and um, velour feeling, velvety feeling. These leaves, now this isn't real, um, oh, no, let's see, is this real leaf? I had old ones a long time ago that were real, um, I think, at least that's what I thought they were. Okay, this comes in little sheets, leaves is what they call them. And so I've taken out some in my book. And there's the first one. Okay, so these just come out and just pull, I'm gonna need both hands. I had two pages. All right, so they kind of stick. Now you're just gonna lay it over the top and you're gonna press it down. And it's gonna be a little bit wasty, but I have literally had some of these um, books of leaf for years and years. A little bit goes a long way. This, in my opinion, it would be such a phenomenal um, thing to use without doing texture, but putting the leaf adhesive through your stencil to make your lettering metallic with your painted signs. So that's how you can get a real metal look versus um, just like the painted um, color. I think the paint just doesn't do it completely. All right, so we'll go into our book and we'll just stick these guys all over. You can pull that apart, beep, it'll stick to you. Make yourself a little puzzle. Eee. Whatever is not um, covered in leaf will still be sticky when you get ready to do whatever is next. So, um, but varnish will take that away. So when you varnish your project, um, that will take the sticky away. All right. So we're gonna go here. This is the grungiest thing I have ever gold leaf or silver leafed. That's, it's actually kind of funny that we're using leaf to make a grungy thing. But man, it looks just like real metal. Oh, I'll get on there. Okay. And you can take your little bits and bobs and stuff them down on there. Um, once you get that ad adhered, you can tear them and move them around. Like I said, it's just like a big old puzzle. When you do, I'll show you the next step in just a minute. Get myself painted into a little corner over here. Okay, the way that we, I gotta get this one done. The way that we take the leaf off. Yeah, okay, see what I mean? Eww, it's everywhere, literally. <laughs> Fun. Okay, you're gonna take your puff and you're going to buff off of here. Okay, and that's going to take away and strip away your leaf. And mine's sticking just a little bit on my background. But that will give you Okay, you know what? Even I learn when I'm doing projects like this. If you push too heavy, then you embed it onto your um, background. So you wanna use lighter pressure. I was really pushing on that and it made it adhere. So, but you know what I love about paint is paint is your best eraser. So um, you are going to, water is an eraser, your fingers are erasers, paint is a great eraser. If I get myself in a pickle right here, I can literally just take my paint and go right back over that and it's no problem whatsoever. So um, if you do something silly like I just did, um, just go back over. No worries. Okay, so isn't that fun how that just comes off and now that looks like, you know, like real diamond plate. Man. Okay, so that is how we get it to this place. And I'm gonna just kind of sweep off just a little. I won't do the whole thing just because repetition. Okay, let me attempt. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna blow dryer it right onto the floor and sweep it up. You ready? There we go. Problem solved. Okay. I'm gonna have floating silver leaf everywhere for months to come. Okay, so now what I wanna show you is we have got this, um, we've got this shiny like this, right? But maybe 
we don't want it that shiny. Maybe we want to buff that down just a little bit. So now what we'll do is we'll go into our colors and keep trying to play with that over there. Gonna go into our other colors and we're going to distress a little bit with black, black gray. Okay. I hope that you're having fun. I love to share like all kinds of new projects and things like that. I'm gonna mix my black and my gray together. I'm gonna really wipe that off. And now I can go into this and I can go right over the top and tone that back as much as I want. So see in this area how that's toned back. I could leave some shine through and some not shine through. Um, whatever way you want to go. It adds to the grunge of it. It tones it down a little. It still looks metallic. You need to decide how much you want on your background. Okay, and then our rust, what we have done in another video, we have got, so we've got so many of these videos. I'm trying to think of, uh, I can't think of the name. We'll put it linked below. Um, if you look for painting with rust, um, with rust paste, uh, that might bring it up, but it'll be linked down below. Okay, so this is sand and glue and I believe um, maybe modeling paste. It's like four things. There's a recipe in that video. I'm gonna get out some of these with my palette knife and wipe it off. We are doing all the grungy things today. Don't you love it? This feels like a masculine product project. Okay, so we've got brown rust. We also sell these little two ounce bottles um, on our website, studior12.com. Um, that'll be linked below too. Um, you need to have um, something with the, the lid in it. And this is a really good size if, um, so this is a two ounce size. So these are two ounce containers. So everything from this will fit in there. If you ever um, mix a special color to paint a project and you mix it on your palette and you're uncertain about whether or not you're going to need more of it, it's good to have like a dozen of these hanging around your house. Um, great for patch paint for your house as well. Um, you just put a little bit in here, put it under your kitchen sink, and then when the kids muff up the walls, you can, you can um, take out your patch paint and it's already in the can. All right, so we're gonna mix that separated just a little bit. I've had this mixed for months now, and um, it's, it's not, that's the first little bit of separating I've seen, and I've taken it out and used it over and over again. Ugh. Yucky, yucky. We're gonna throw that away and get out a fresh one. <clears throat> okay, so to add our texture to our background, or to our rust background, we are going to use our dome brush. I'm gonna go over here on this side right here. I always start with my brown and I'm gonna just kind of lay it on and smear it. Okay, so depending on how rusty you want things, um, Go back to here. This one I did with way more orange than brown. This one has more of the brown. So you can go in a couple different directions with this. You don't have to have it all be um, the way I'm doing it. You can do whatever floats your boat. Okay, and so we'll get that on there. And this has got sand mixed into it, so it's gonna have that nice rust feel to it. Okay, then I'm gonna wipe my brush off. Then we're gonna pick up our orange. This is where it gets a little bit trickier because I wanna set this down, my paint is wet. So I'm just um, dappling. I'm just touching just a little bit, okay? So that way it'll stay where I put it, but I can still kind of smear. And you can have that float along if you need to. Get your face down there so you can see it. And sometimes you have to push on it. Um, this stuff is on there for good. Like it's, you can sand it off, but it's, once you put this on there, it really does stick when it's dry. I was amazed. Um, we found this, we'll link that, um, oh, it's in that video of the rusty technique. Um, we found this when they had all the shortages of everything in 2020. Um, one of the peoples went off and figured out a recipe for making the rust paste. Okay. 
Love artists because we will not be stopped, right? Give me shortages and we'll figure out some. Okay. Set. That is how we rust, that's how we leaf. And I think that you are going to love painting with the diamond plate stencil. I wanna see your projects, make sure that you share with us and make sure that you subscribe and ring that bell so that you can find our other videos when we put them up. Thank you so much, have a great day. If you guys like this video and wanna see more, be sure to subscribe to the Studio R12 YouTube channel and make sure to hit that bell so you'll be notified anytime we go live. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook. We're there every Tuesday at 12 and 9 p.m. Eastern with tutorials and answering your questions live.